Hi everyone, welcome to this second lecture on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering presented to you by Edupedia World. The first lecture was a basic introduction into the field of Material Science and Engineering, what it is about and the scope of it. Today's lecture, we will formalize the scope and uh, width of Material Science and Engineering. This diagram here so what are the various components related with material science let me talk a little about each of them and then we'll see further deep into it so we see five things one is structure properties performance processing and characterization these four kind of ends of the tetrahedron so what does each of them mean? Structure basically refers to the structure of material and as we'll see uh, in a couple of minutes there are different levels of structure. Then the structure of the material will basically define what is the property of the material right and uh, the property is very very important why so because depending on the property of the material the performance of the application it is put to will depend better the property better the performance and also there are a whole range of properties as we'll see in a couple of minutes so we need not have all the properties in the best of shape we need to choose those properties which are relevant as per the application and the performance of those properties should be okay for our task right now these properties how do we measure those properties that is done by what is known as characterization so the characterization of a material are the tests and different experiments we do on a material to study how what is the property of the material how strong it is how much of impact can it take and different things we'll look about those things in much more details in future lectures finally the processing part same material if it undergoes two different processing uh, systems then the effective property will end up to be different so processing also affects the properties even though the material is chemically the same so this is a holistic picture about material science and engineering and the various components that come together as and uh, need to be understood to be an efficient materials engineer. Now let us see one by one. Structure. Structure is on different levels. One is subatomic level. This is basically the electrons, protons and neutrons. So you cannot do much about this by processing. This is inherently there for a particular atom. Then we have what is known as the atomic structure. So a carbon atom is different from a silicon atom. So we need to take up that particular atom to make our material which is relevant. Because even on the atomic scale, we cannot do much change on the structural level. We'll see there are cases where some materials having same elements can be treated differently. But more or less elemental material or the compound kind of determines what is the structure or rather what is the property. Then we have microscopic structure and macroscopic structure. These two microscopic and macroscopic structure is highly dependent on what are the processing parameters that are applied on the material. So that affects the structure and microscopic and macroscopic structure is affected resulting in property enhancement or deterioration. Fine. Now let us see what are the properties. Properties can be broadly classified into six categories as I will show you here. Mechanical property means what is the strength, what is the tensile 
strength what is the impact strength things like that what how much elongation will the material undergo then electrical properties like what is the conductivity whether it is a insulator or a semiconductor or a very good conductor those properties fall under the electrical property category then we have thermal property like uh, what exactly is the melting point if it is a very heat resistant material it, ceramics are generally known to be materials which have very high melting point so that is a thermal property again another thermal property would be what is the heat conductivity of a material if you need to build something with should be heat resistant then you need to give some insulators so that kind of things will be required to be known to make a good application then optical properties whether a material is transparent translucent how much energy does it observe such things kind of optical then we have magnetic properties what is the magnetic nature of the material finally deteriorative property deteriorative property this uh, refers to corrosive properties like how good a material is against corrosion against wears such kind of things and uh, this is in fact a very important property because the application that is continuous tear and wear right so a material need to withstand that kind of tear and wear so it need to have a good deteriorative property now once we have seen the different structural sub levels and different property types this is what i was saying that the processing can affect the structure mainly the microscopic and macroscopic structure and this influence on the structure will affect the property the different properties can be influenced as a result the performance will vary so this is a holistic thing uh, any change at one end can bring a change at the other end fine so this kind of sums up the scope of material science and engineering next let us see that why do we need to study material science and engineering last lecture you already saw that it is kind of embedded in our day to day life and the luxuries we encounter so it is important but uh, let us formalize it point by point by being a material scientist you will know how to undertake a material selection let's say you know what the task is what the application is there are thousands and thousands of materials available should you pick uh, pick a steel with low carbon should you pick steel with high carbon should you rather pick aluminum so you need to know the fundamentals about it only then can you make the right choice which is the right choice both as the material itself but also based on the economic factor because money is a important factor when it comes to industry so material selection then new material fabrication only when you know the fundamentals of the existing materials you can build on that knowledge and make new materials right so if you need to build something which has much more tensile strength than the existing materials right then what you need to know you need to know the best materials available in terms of tensile strength at that moment and how can you tweak that what are the changes in physics that you can bring by introducing new alloying ele elements maybe or different processing parameters maybe to improve that tensile strength property next material investigation in order to undertake material investigation whether it is a material which is to be deployed at a certain application or for material investigation in case there is a failure and you need to analyze why exactly did the material fail you need to know the fundamentals of material science and engineering only then material investigation can lead you somewhere a very interesting uh, example of material investigation is if you follow uh, i think it comes in discovery channel the air crash investigations 
a lot of air crashes take place due to material failures okay so that is a interesting job prospect you can take up once you have mastered the field the knowledge of material science and engineering finally you need to have cost effective solutions for things you cannot choose something much more expensive than you should choose because then it will not be economically viable so you need to know the different options available and make some compromises based on cost without compromising the safety right so these are some of the reasons why you should study material science and engineering obviously it is much research oriented field and it is exciting especially for people who like to do things on research and physics kind of field but even if you are not interested in research just to study about different materials and to understand what are the different things day to day components that you use is quite exciting i think so if you know these things then what can you do you can make judicious choice as per requirement this brings us to the end of the lecture next lecture what i will do is i will go through the broad classification of materials what are the dif different categories under which all the material in the world or universe can be put under i will also discuss what are the future goals in the field what are the different exciting things that are popping up in the field